Hello guys, welcome to the Airbus A320. Now I've heard that some of you have an Airbus A320 like this lying in your backyard. So if you're wondering how to start it, I'll try to help. We'll try to take off from my backyard, which is called Brussels International Airport. Let's go. You can see that the aircraft is currently in a state which is called cold and dark. Now, in order to select the power on, we have to do a few checks. So, we check that the thrust levers are at idle, that the engine masters are off, the engine mode selector is normal, that the parking brake is set, we have the gear selector down, and the windshield wipers are off. As we have completed the necessary checks, we can now power on the aircraft. First of all, we select both batteries on. Then we have to do the APU fire test. Both lights are illuminating, the test is performing quite good, and we can start the APU itself. We select the master switch on and the start. Okay, the APU start has been successful. We can now set up all the displays and lighting of the cockpit. First of all, set up the lights, the floodlights, integrity lights, overhead integrity lights, and of course some bright dome. And I'll now select the displays to show us some information. Now, as we have all the displays working and all the lights as well, we can start the overhead scan. Uh, the principle is from left to right and from down up, like this. The main purpose of this overhead scan is to test a few features, to enable a few and to extinguish all the white lights. So we start with the crew supply light, no light, it's good. Now we test the recorder, the flight data recorder. We select ground control on on and test it. We hear the beep, everything is all right. We have defaults, but it is absolutely acceptable because we are now on the ground. Emergency electric power, the panel is okay. Evacuation, good. Flight control computers are good. Now we set up the ADRS, the inertial reference system, which tells the aircraft where it is currently located. Uh, we start by rotating the knobs one at a time to the nav position and waiting till the on bat light extinguishes. It has done for the number one. No light for number three. And no light for number two. We can continue with the overhead scan from the center. We select the seat belts on, the non-smoking to auto, the emergency exit lights to arm. We check that the landing elevation is in auto. We check the air conditioning panel. We select the APU bleed to supply us the air from the auxiliary power unit to cool or heat the cabin. As you can see, the lights on pack 1 and pack 2 have extinguished. This means that the packs are fully working and the air conditioning is working as well. Now, continuing on the electric panel. We have two fault lights on generator 1 and generator 2. But that is perfectly normal because we have no engines running and nothing runs the generators as well. Now we'll test the battery to see if it is charging correctly. We shut down the batteries and we reselect them. Now we have finished with the electrics, we can extinguish the lights on fuel panel. To do that we will just select all the pumps to automatic. Now the fuel panel is set, uh, hydraulic panel displays no lights. Now we have to do an engine fire test. To do this, I press the test button, 
We can see the three lights illuminating there. We look at the fire lights at engine master switches. Then we turn off the master warning and check the ECAM display for its checklist. And the test is complete. And the same happens with engine fire number two. We continue with the right hand side, starting with the wipers, rain repellent, everything looks clean and good here, cargo smoke, cargo heat, flight control computers are in a good working order, and we end up with the radios. This is now selected good, VHF3, ACARS, frequency 1 to 1 decimal 5, and we select the receive button on public address system, the PA. Then we go up, checking the maintenance panel for any white lights, we can see none. Then we check all the circuit breakers, that the audio switching button is on norm. And now the overhead scan is complete. Now we'll be heading down to the center panel, where we'll check all the standby instruments. We'll pull this knob to make the artificial horizon work and we'll check that the anti-skid and nose wheel steering button is on position. And now we'll be heading down from the center panel to the pedestal. Now we'll check the left hand radio panel. It is set on VHF1. Frequencies are okay. And uh, transmitting on interphone. Receiving as well. And uh, public address system. All the lights are okay, the weather radar is off, and we'll go a bit forward. Now we'll check that all the switchings are in their normal positions, and we can check a few statuses on the lower ECAM display. We'll check engine to see if we have correct all quantity, then we'll check hydraulics, they all seem good for this stage of the flight and we will check the overall status page which shows any more functions which may be there. We have only one which is autopilot 1 plus 2 but this is perfectly normal because we have no engines running and we are on the ground. Now we will continue with the thrust levers once again. We will check that they are in their idle position. We will check that the engine masters are both off that the engine mode selector is on normal, that the ground spoilers are retracted and disarmed, that the flaps are selected up, rudder trim is showing zero, parking brake is set to on, and that the gravity gear extension lever is in its correct position as well. Then we'll move forward again, checking the right hand radio, it is on VHF2, frequencies are correct and transmitting on interphone as well as receiving on it and public address too. The last thing we will check on the pedestal is the TCAS, the traffic collision and avoidance system. We must check that both selectors, this one and this one, are on their standby positions. Now the overall cockpit scan is complete. The thing we have to do now is set up the MCDU. We select the flight management and guidance computer. We check that they are the correct engines, that the database is valid, and we continue to the initialization page. Our route today will be Echo Bravo Bravo Romeo and Echo Bravo Bravo Romeo. From Brussels to Brussels, we put it here. Cancel a few messages, return, and press Align IRS. Then we put in the flight number, which will be 320, and cruise flight level 20. That will be 2000 feet. We go to the next page to see our weights. Our current gross weight is 52.74 tons 
and uh, the zero fuel weight seems appropriate as well as we have 8.6 tons of fuel on the aircraft the last thing we check is the route itself from Brussels we have a few page updates from Brussels we depart via the runway 25 left inserting and arriving ILS runway 25 left and now the very last thing that's remaining is the performance we have to put in our predetermined values for V1 the decision speed VR the rotate speed and V2 the safe climb speed today we'll use random values of 130 130 and 140 now we select that we'll be using flaps 1 with THS up 0 and the performance page is complete the last thing we have to do is set up the FCU the flight control unit on the flight control unit we check that the flight director is on but we have a comfortable position for our navigation display that the constraints are on that we have the correct pressure of 1013 then these are computed automatically the next thing we do is select an initial climb altitude which in this case is 4000 feet then we do the same on the right a comfortable position constraint correct QNH, the pressure and fly director now we can already start the engines to do that safely I'll grab my checklist all seems okay what I have to do now is to ask the air traffic control for the clearance uh, Brussels Speedbird 123 requests clearance to start the engines. Okay, thank you, Speedbird 123, clear to start the engines. So now the air traffic control has cleared me to start the engines, and I'll do that. I'll finish with the checklist, select a beacon light on, select the engine mode selector to ignition. And by flicking the master switch number two to on, I will start the auto start sequence. Engine two has been started successfully, it is stable. Time to start engine one. And the starter is disengaged, we have two good engine starts. So now after the engine start, I'll do the after start checklist. Everything seems to be normal. It means that now we can push back, taxi and take off. So we have just taxied to the holding point of runway 25 left. I'll now ask for the clearance to depart. Uh, Brussels Tower, Speedbird 123 request departure runway 25 left. We are fully ready. Carbida, thank you, cleared for takeoff runway 25 left, speed with 1, 2, 3. So, I've just released the parking brake. I give some thrust to brake away. And as we are entering the runway, I will turn on the appropriate lights. And just before the departure, I'll finish the checklist. Everything seems to be checked. And here we go. Mm -hmm. 